Hi everybody, welcome to another tutorial from sound for more It's Leo speaking. And today we are going to start our exploration of uh, Synth Master 2. And, um, you know, it's um, one of those synths which has so many functionalities. So we're going to take it slowly and go through as much as we can. But inevitably, there will be a few things perhaps that I will not cover. And if so, please do leave some comments and I will continue to add tutorials. So before I start, um, as always, I like to remind uh, uh, my viewers to subscribe as it helps the channel to grow and it helps to bring more tutorials, videos and giveaways. So let's go for it. So Synth Master 2, I just loaded it into the standalone uh, version. And as you play, if it is the first time that you loaded it and um, assuming that you have not changed anything like the default sound, that is what you're presented with this preset called SQ Brainstormer KS. Which is really, really nice. Now, if you click here on the name, it brings you up this menu and let's click on the init preset. And that is what we will use to explain the different uh, synth parameters and functionalities. So as you can hear, we have a Sawtooth waveform loaded. Now, if you want to go back to, pre to the original preset, just click on the menu again. You can select load default. Or indeed, if you want to experiment and browse and you want to a random choice, click on road random and it will load you a nice random preset. Really, really nice. And indeed, if you find that one of those presets is something you want to set as a default, click on save and then choose set as a default preset. Anyway, let's go back to our init preset. So on the top right hand side, you have a volume here and a meter on the right hand side. So good to choose a, a volume that is not maximal because it will clip. It has so many functionality that eventually will. Now, selection, you can see them here on this um, green, bluishy color. And the moment we have layer one selected, so we have uh, two layers, layer one and layer two. Indeed, if you click on effect, for example, and you want to go back to the synth parameter, you have to click to one of the two layers. Now, layer one is active, which um, you can see here from these um, um, a square which is highlighted if you click on it then you don't have any more sound because nothing is active you can activate layer two of course which is independent and you can select it as well like that and you can also adjust the volume up here okay let's go back to layer two acti sorry layer one and activate layer one as you can see the volume has gone up Okay, so remember that. Let's deactivate layer two and let's adjust the volume on layer, uh, layer one as well. Perfect. So we will focus the explanation on this video of this part of the synth, which I'm highlighting with uh, um, the mouse, the cursor. So we have uh, two oscillators, which, as you can see here, oscillator number one, which is selecting and also active. You can deactivate that, no sound. You can select oscillator two and activate that. Again, same so tooth, and you can activate them both. Again, you have a higher uh, volume, which you can see uh, on the top right hand side uh, uh, if you look at the meter. So let's deactivate now oscillator two and let's select oscillator number one. You see also here on the right hand side four buttons which said mod one, two, three, and four. These are modulators and they're really, really cool, but I will explain how to use those in another tutorial because there is a re already a lot that I need to cover. So here it says type, it says basic, click on basic and you have different types of synthesis, basic, additive, wavetable, vector, and audio in. And in this video, we're going to go through them all. So let's start with the basic here. You have a free button here, which allows you to, if selected, to have the phase that start, 
that is freely is free to start and so it's not never start from the same starting point so it means that it's more of that analog effect okay where you don't know exactly what the phase level will be or what the phase position will be so i deactivate that for now you can see a waveform here which says so tooth you see R on the left and on the right to browse different waveform. So let's go to the next one. Pulse. You don't hear anything with pulse at the moment because you need to change the phase down here. And by the way, every time you have a controls, you can click on it and it will show you this menu where it will say set to default, which will go down to zero. And then you have possibility to have MIDI learn by preset or global settings. And you can also add modulation sources. For example, let me show you a quick one using an LFO, LFO one. And he's using this LFO here. Okay, perfect. Now you can click on the control again. And by the way, you saw it change the color. You can click on remove modulation and remove it. Okay, and the color goes back to the default. Now you can continue to browse uh, to other waveform. You have noise, you have sign, triangle, square, so tooth, so down. And then you start to have something like AM M complex. You might wonder where it goes. So click on the waveform and it will show you that these were the one which we went through first. Then you have a waveform category then inside there you have subcategories any subcategories are different waveforms so lots to choose from really really lot so just browse and um, enjoy the other thing you can see here is you can load your samples so click on samples and you have some default sample that comes with the synth so let's choose these kv331 audio okay do do bop and you can hear is definitely a sample. You can also import your WAV files. Click import. Let's choose one, which I used in other videos. It tells you, it asks you where you want to save it as a location, what you're importing, the user folder will do, or you can create a new one. Let's click import. And here we are. Perfect. Now, I want to show you at this point uh, something that is useful. You see this uh, cog simple, click on it. If you select the reset to default, it will go back to the default for this particular section, which is different than selecting any preset as it will initialize everything regarding the preset. So you can also copy the setting, paste the setting, lock them, or load the preset for this part of the synth. So you can say, I go to organ really nice okay so let's select uh, reset to default as you can see here at the bottom you have volume your pump left to right of course you I hope you have a headphone for this so let's set it to default pitch okay and you can clearly see you can add LFO to each one of those or modulation detuning And the last two controls really depends on the algorithm here, which you have selected. At the moment, you have phase and high cut. And if you choose here where it says low pass, you can change that algorithm from low pass, high pass, etc., which is really nice. You can do that uh, uh, filtering automatically at waveform level. And there are some which are really interesting. Look at this sync no window. Okay, so you can see straight away that um, this the phase button has changed to sync. Let's try. Okay, and the eye cut is still the same. Okay, let's go back to the default spectrum low pass as an algorithm. So I have my phase and I have my high cut. Perfect. These are the parameters that you find under oscillator. But here you have also a selection of number of voices that you can multiply for at the oscillator level, which is different than using the unisons, which is here, which I will explain in another tutorial. So let's multiply the number of oscillator voices to two. You can hear the amplitude going up, four. 
So be careful, always adjust um, your volume. Keep an eye on the level here on the top or right hand side because it will clip. Now, when you have more than one voice, you can select this button which says voices, and then you have a lot of parameters. So the typical one is detune spread. Really nice. You can choose how much you want to uh, how much you want to mix the voices. You can have a pun spread within the stereo channel. You can have a tone spread. It's really nice how he's spreading the, the, tone, the tones between different voices. And if you have something like pulse, you can also spread the phase. Really nice. And remember, if you click on the tune curve, you can add the modulation there as well. So lots of parameters. Now, let's go back to something like the sawtooth. Here you have a drift um, and you have two buttons, a mount the speed. Um, so this is the random um, drift uh, pitch LFO or LFO applied to the pitch. So you can set a mount the speed. So let's try. Really nice. Okay. Let's click uh, reset to default. And then you have key track. This one is quite interesting. So as you know, you at the moment the, the tuning is standard tuning. But you can choose a bass note and then you can set in center how much it will change from that bass uh, note. So let's try. So you can see a difference there as well. And this help you. Uh, this will really help you with micro tuning. So again, let's reset to default. So we have gone through just the basic type of synthesis and we haven't even touched on the modulators, right? So a lot of parameters there and you can duplicate, of course, by um, the, the sound and the texture enabling the second oscillator. And remember you have also two layers. So really, really have a lot. Now let's go to different synthesis. Let's go to additive. And you probably have seen these in a lot of other synth. So down here at the moment, because we have selective waveform here on the parameter, you can choose the different, different type of waveform like sine or like so. You can choose it for each one of the harmonic. And down here, it shows you the harmonic, first, second, third, etc. How do I know the harmonic? They are harmonic. You click on one and it says harmonic number and you can go by integer or you can go by semitones as well. Now you see this bar here, that's the volume. So you can go to another harmonic and click and hold and move up and change the volume. Really nice. And then you can act on the parameter and say, I want to change the detuning. So then you can go for each of the harmonic and change the detuning that, of course, for the harmonic, which have a volume. And you can create some very interesting sounds. But anyway, let's go to reset to default. OK, so remember that you have this additive mode and um, you have different parameter. You can choose volume, pump, detune, phase, tone, even algorithm. OK, so and of course, you can have one oscillator with one type of synthesis and the other one with another one, and then you can multiply again by different layers. So you have tons of possibility. Now, you have a different type of synthesis also, which is the traditional wavetable. And these must be included, right? So it is really nice. Again, you have wavetables here. And uh, what do you find straight away that you have an additional knob here called index, which allows you to move through the waveforms in the, in the wavetable. So let's choose the this one. Let's uh, act on the index. And of course, you know, you can straight away add the modulation there and it's great. Click on the wavetable and of course, you can have different categories of wavetables that you can choose from. 
lots and lots to do. And of course, you have all the usual parameters. And indeed, you can multiply voices. As I showed you in the basic synthesis, you can add drift, uh, uh, random pitch LFO, etc., etc. So, so versatile. Let's move on. You have also vector synthesis, which is similar to additive. But in this case, you, you can move uh, the source towards four different uh, waveforms. Let's say the first one is sine, the second one we say triangle, the third one we say square, and the fourth one we say so tooth. And let me play a note and move the position towards different waveforms. And it will add accordingly based on the level. Uh, um, sorry, we'll add the levels of waveform based on how close this cross is to that particular waveform. So more sine here. At the center, we'll add all of them equally. More on the triangle side, more on the square, and more on the so. Of course, the interesting thing is you can put it down here to the corner. Here you can do the change on the X uh, axis as well as Y axis. And of course, you guess it, you can add a modulation. So, and this is where it becomes really nice. So let's use the same metaphor for now for simplicity. And of course, you can cut a little bit of that top using a filter. And you can hear the sound, how great it is. Again, look at the difference here. Reset to default, it will reset that, but the filter is still active. Click on the menu, any preset, the filter will go. So hopefully that is clear as a difference. So you saw the vector uh, type of synthesis, and the last one is audio in. Well, it does what it says. It takes the audios in. And that depends on the number of keys, of course, that you have active on the keyboard. So let's try. Test, 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 test. So hopefully you can hear the audio in on my voice coming through. And if you want to make that even more obvious, go to effects here, click and hold there, add, for example, delay. Um, let's increase a little bit of feedback. Let's go to the second one, click and hold, add the reverb. Perhaps uh, let's increase the effect mix and also the distance and try and enjoy. Test, 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 test. Really nice. And what is cool about audio in is that you can mix it up with the other oscillators layer. So let's go to oscillator two. Let's activate that. Let's use, for example, sine wave, decrease the volume like so. And let's try. Test, 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 One, two, one, three, one, two, three, two, three. So really, really, really powerful stuff. So hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully I didn't go too quick in the explanation of Synth Master 2. As I said, it's a, um, as I said at the beginning, it is quite a complex synth. I'm trying to break it down in small parts but you can clearly see already how many functionality you have and and that's why you can create such a fantastic uh, preset is very unique and definitely the most powerful synth out there in ios without a doubt okay see you at the next tutorial thank you bye